and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Ottawa, Tennessee. We are blessed that you are joining us in person. We're blessed that you're joining us um, on live stream or later in the day or whenever. Please know that you are part of us as you worship with us. And we invite you, if you have not already, to download the full text booklet from sfaec.org. And in it are all the hymns all the scripture readings, as well as all the prayers. And we invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, Hail Thou Once to Suffised Jesus. God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were, who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Armaeus. The Lord said to him in a vision, Armaeus, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Amarius come in and lay his hands on him so that he <coughs> might regain his sight. But Armaeus answered, Lord, I've heard many heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who 
invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he suffered for the sake of my name. So Armaeus went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 30, which we will read in unison. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from the Revelation of John. I look and I heard the voices, the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and all of that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. <laughs> And the elders found, fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gather there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. It's a little brighter in here today. It's nice, isn't it? Uh, we, we did get the, the lights put in for the chancel area. And I think part of the brightness, too, is our newest deacon, Derek James Quinn, the Reverend. And we are glad that he is with us today. This is a Sunday where we have two of the very best stories in all of Scripture on the same day. How to choose. I mean, we've got that opening story from Acts with Saul breathing threats and murder headed to catch people who were followers of Jesus, people called followers of the way. And on his way, out of the blue, a flash of light appears. And rather than accusing, the voice of Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? In another place, it will go on to say, it hurts to kick against the goad. Why are you making life so tough for yourself, Saul, and for everybody else? Not an accusation, but an honest question meeting Saul exactly where he is. 
And so Saul, now blinded by the light he has encountered, is taken to a street that still exists in Damascus, Straight Street. Despite all the bombing Damascus endured, that street is still there. And Ananias, a faithful follower of Jesus, also has a visit. And again, it's an invitation. It's not accusatory. It's not harsh. It's, you know, Saul needs you right now. And Ananias does not want to go. Lord, you know what he's been up to. And Jesus reassures him and said, things are different. Trust me on this and go. And so he goes. And in all honesty, that encounter, that encounter we just heard in the Acts of the Apostles is the very reason most of us are in this room. Because it is the missionary efforts of Paul that will change the tide and the spreading of the way. That a persecutor would have such a change of heart as to be a follower is indeed attention getting. And the passion that he once pursued with, he now shares in his love of Jesus. And that passion is contagious and is spread through the centuries. And then there's the wonderful story from the 21st chapter of John. John seems to have wrapped up his gospel at the end of 20. And then there's just one more story he has to tell us. He has to tell us this story by the Sea of Tiberias, the same place where he fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. Make no mistake, it is not an accident that the disciples who are now lost and confused, even though they've already encountered Jesus twice in John's Gospel, once the majority of them in the upper room, and then he has to come back when Thomas is with them a second time. So this is the third encounter John tells us about. And now Peter, the one that Jesus prayed for, that he would come back after denying Jesus at that time of the trial and the crucifixion, that he would come back and that he would lead his other disciples, has kind of gotten distracted. It's hard to do. Let's go back to something familiar. We know how to fish. Come on. Let's go fishing. It's like putting on an old pair of slippers for that group of disciples. And so off they jump into a boat, and all night long, they cast their nets, and they cast their nets, and have nothing to show for it. Kind of like how they're feeling about their life all together. But as the sun rises, they look on the shore, and there's a fire. And a man sitting by the fire, cooking breakfast. And he calls out, have you no fish, children? And I think it's much to their credit that they didn't come back with a sarcastic answer. <laughs> but they did not. And they instead admit they do not. And he said, well, throw the net to the other side. And suddenly their nets are so full they can barely bring them in. And the beloved disciple says, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And Peter's so excited, he puts on his clothes and jumps in the water. <laughs> Runs to shore, and there is breakfast. And so they sit together, and they have breakfast. You see, Jesus has come back <coughs> to build up his disciples. He knows how discouraging the past few weeks have been for them. He knows how easy it is to slip into old habits, even when we have the best of intentions. He understands all too well 
how loneliness, even when we're surrounded by people, can engulf us, can overtake us, and make us weary and challenged to do what must be done. And so he appears and invites them to breakfast. And there they eat together again that same meal that the 5,000 ate, bread and fish. And they are reminded of how close Jesus always is even when they cannot see him. Loneliness might well be one of the great diseases of our time. And I don't care how full your calendar is or my calendar is. I don't care how busy we think we are. There is, in the midst of so many lives, a nagging loneliness longing for something to really connect with. We feel adrift, much like a ship in the Sea of Tiberias. Brene Brown, in her book, Dare to Lead, and I need to take an aside here and tell you all that I have religiously avoided using Brene Brown in the pulpit because there is, in Episcopal circles, clergy bingo, and one of the squares is the clergy refers to Brene Brown. But today, I'm going to let you fill in that square. <laughs> For Brene Brown tells a story about an Air Force colonel, Dee Dee Halfhill, who was talking to her troops about exhaustion. Now, Colonel Halfhill had 1,800 airmen and women under her charge. And she's having this conversation in this large hangar with them about how exhausted and tired everyone is. And she goes on to do something daring. She said, you know, a lot of times what we call exhaustion is actually loneliness. It's feelings of loneliness overtaking us. Is it possible that you all might be lonely? If you think you are, raise your hand. A full one quarter of the men and women assembled raised their hands. She was dumbfounded. She expected a smattering of hands. And she realized for all the hands that went up, how many more might not have gone up out of reluctance to admit such a thing publicly. And this acknowledgement of loneliness and the troops' response to her drove her to the files looking for articles on leadership to address just such a challenge. She could not find any. She looked and she looked in all the manuals. There was nothing in any of her leadership manuals addressing this problem. So then she went into the archives. And sure enough, as she tore through the archives, she found Air Force Manual 35-15 written in 1948, right after World War II. In it, she was amazed to find pages full of words and phrases like to belong, a sense of belonging, feeling, fear, compassion, confidence, kindness, friendliness, and mercy. And unlike any of the other manuals she had ventured through, this manual used the word love 13 different times. What does it mean for a leader to love the people that are being led? 
It was for her a revelation and a new way forward as a leader. Interestingly enough, this manual was written by the office of the Air Force chaplains. Jesus knows something about the human condition. And he meets us in all our most human moments. Jesus knows about loneliness. He experienced it firsthand as people fled, and he underwent the trial and crucifixion. Jesus knows about wanting to belong as he calls a group of people again and again to him. He knows how to pick out the ones who need his help. And interestingly, as Sean Going will postulate in his book, Reading the Gospel of John, part of why he believes the gospeler John never tells us names. We don't know the Samaritan woman's name. We don't know the name of the blind man who was healed. We guess at, but we don't know who was the beloved disciple, the one that recognized Jesus from the fishing boat and said, it is the Lord. And Gone maintains that that's deliberate because just as each of those people experienced, each of us can put ourselves in the story right there. We too understand something about the Samaritan woman. We too understand something about a blind person or a person longing for healing, a person longing for belonging, a person longing to see that which he or she loves most. John knows that reality for us because John experienced that reality with the risen Lord. So as we go through this week, you who choose to break fast with us on a Sunday morning, and we'll break fast together around this table, sharing bread and wine, as Jesus' followers did at that Last Supper. We who break fast together are invited to this from Sean Gwynn. Come and have breakfast. Perhaps it is more of John's irony that he ends his story not with supper, but with breakfast. They say it is the most important meal of the day. It sets us up. So is that why you invite us to sit with you at each new dawn, to be nourished by your word of love before we set out once again to follow you wherever life leads us? Come and have breakfast with Jesus, not just this morning, but every new day. Invite Jesus to the table. Listen as Jesus assures us that we too are beloved disciples. Hear Jesus nudge us to others who will support us and to others who need our support. Allow Jesus to lead us through the most mundane and ordinary days, whether it's our work away from the house or the duties in the house. Jesus is present if we invite him in each and every moment of our day. So this day and from here on out, Start your day with breakfast with Jesus and know that when we invite him to breakfast, he too 
will likely ask, do you love me? And challenge us to show all the ways that we do. Beloved of Christ, Jesus not only meets us, Jesus is willing to be with us, to lead us, to support us. And with that knowledge, may we never be truly lonely again. Let us stand and together proclaim the name of God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gather together in the name and power of our risen Lord, through whom the glory of God is revealed. Let us offer our prayers to Almighty God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That heavenly peace may descend upon us and upon the whole world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may guide all who hold authority in this world and in the church into the ways of justice, peace, and truth. For all people everywhere, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have come to new birth in holy baptism and all who have received the forgiveness of sins in absolution may live in peace with each other. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may love one another as Christ has commanded us. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church throughout the world and in this congregation may be united in peace, empowered by the Spirit, and faithful in its mission to all humankind. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear That the power of Christ's victory over death may show itself among us, bringing freedom, joy, light, and life to those in need. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, St. Stephen's Oak Ridge of our diocese, St. John Deadwood of our Companion Diocese of South Dakota, and all who minister in your church. Remember all those on our prayer list, including those on our long-term prayer list and those on our short-term prayer list, including Shelia Crane, Carlton David, Nicolette Gershman, Brenda Giles, Diane Honeycutt, Owen Hughes, Beth Lackey, John McCullough, Thames Pemberton, Gail Reed, Beverly Roberts, The Sniff Family, Pat Sosha, Jan, Julia, Terry, and Zeed. 
Remember those on our parish family prayer cycle, the Tisdale family, the Tullock family, Rod and Carolyn Varnell. Remember those celebrating birthdays this week, including Margaret McCullough, Kathy Landstreet, Ed McCoy, and Stuart Johnson. Those celebrating anniversaries, including Denzel and Kathy Landstreet, Kendra Douglas and her family, Robert and Florence Baggio and their family, and Carlos Bordeaux and his family, whose habitat homes were dedicated in the past 10 days. We rejoice at the birth of Lorelei Vogel, great-granddaughter of Diane Honeycutt, for my ordination to the diaconate and the ordination to the priesthood of Mary Beth Manoff. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone, including Ron Jackson, Buzz Prigmore, and Bruce Hensley, and then bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together with all others, united to us in the communion of the risen Lord, including Blessed Francis, for all that we need in this life and in your eternal dominion, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, eternal God, that we who are made one with Jesus Christ in the power of his death and resurrection may show forth in our lives the love which proclaims us his disciples, that the world may believe in you and be saved. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So it's birthday and anniversary Sunday. Anyone with a May birthday or anniversary, and check Nick's, I'm looking at you. <laughs> what people find out is I'm terrible about names, but dates stick in my head. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday and anniversary. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank you all for sharing your birthdays and anniversaries with us. Uh, a quick note, just so everybody is comfortable with what we're doing. We are currently offering communion in two ways. You can continue to take the mini chalice that has both the bread and wine, and you're welcome to do that. We also have returned to the use of wafers, and I have an intention cup that I can dip the wafer in. If you would like to receive it with wine, you can take just the wafer or the uh, wafer dipped with wine, whatever is most comfortable for you. Uh, we want you to be comfortable as you come forward to break fast with our Lord Jesus. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, Bring offering and come into his courts with praise.
All things come of you, O Lord. We continue on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through, Through your, your spirit, spirit you replenish, replenish us and call us, us to the fullness of, of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You, you gave, gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful servants and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another, rejected your love. Yet, Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. 
Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Francis and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give of us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God.
post, <clears throat> excuse me, the post-communion prayer is found on page 18. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite you to be seated for just a minute for a few announcements. All of you present, and if you want to come wherever you are and can get here, we're having a reception after this gathering. The food is set up in the parish hall, and we hope you will come down and uh, have a little more breakfast or late lunch or, or early lunch, whatever you want to call it, as we celebrate Derek's ordination to the diaconate in Christ One Holy Catholic Church and bid him well wishes as he heads back to Michigan for not one but two parishes. He is going to be a busy man indeed. And so please come and wish him well as we send him with our love and prayers back to Michigan. Um, and then know that we've got a lot of things continuing to go on in church. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. Many of you have already been generous. We've got gifts in the office that we're going to have to get tagged up because they keep coming in. And that's a happy problem. And we will be going, we know, to Central High at 1030 on Thursday because we're going to help them set up a gift table to go with their teacher appreciation lunch. We're still waiting to hear from Udawa Elementary when we will be taking gifts to them. But know that we're out delivering gifts in our fellow congregations in East Hamilton Ministerial Association are covering the other schools. This is one of the duties we take seriously as being the churches of this community, is that we support those who work so hard for our children in this community. Um, also know that this week we've got a lot of exciting things continuing to go on, not the least of which is we'll be packing sack packs at 5.30 on Wednesday. And if you've not come and joined this rowdy group, you're missing out on the fun. We have a great time every Wednesday evening. And then you can stay around and join us for a evening, brief evening prayer service. And then we will be talking a little bit more about the Gospeler Luke. And some of his writings will be doing a very familiar story this week. We'll be looking at chapter 15 of the Gospel of Luke. So it's never too late to drop in and join us. We'd love to see you. And we've got a lot of exciting things in the looking ahead. Yesterday, Gay and I were blessed to be at two Habitat home dedications and um, know that good work with Habitat continues. And you'll be hearing more as more houses uh, come up to be dedicated. Also, um, May 20th, I hope, is on your calendar. That's when we're going to celebrate with Marie Chagru her retirement. We're going to have a party in the parish hall from 6.30 to 8.30. Chef Al is helping prepare some of the food. I'll be doing some of the food. We've got some other contributors. But we'd love for you to come and be part of this celebration and thank Marie for her 13 faithful years of service to us at St. Francis. If you would like to give a monetary gift to that um, cause, because we're going to present her with one check, please make your checks out to St. Francis and indicate that they are for Marie's gift. And we couldn't do any of this without the hard work of many, many, many people. For one, we have all these people who help lead us in worship, those of you who come forward, those of you who faithfully sit up here, our seminarian, Sue's Southern, and of course, our deacon for the day, Derek James Quinn, the reverend, and he is with us for his first time as deaconing at a church. So we are particularly blessed to have that. 
Dr. Matthew Kreps is with us today on organ, and we are so grateful that you are back. It is always a joy to have you with us. Ms. Kirsten Herzog and Mr. Chuck Nix are our vocalists. On sound is Mr. Andy Hall, and on video is Ms. Rebecca Brewer, and we are blessed, blessed, blessed by all that they continue to quietly do behind the scenes. And then there's the altar guild who makes all this happen every week. And if you're looking for your lily, it's sitting out on the porch, please, if you gave an Easter lily, take it home, plant it in your yard. It will be something you can look forward to coming up next Easter. But for now, a blessing, an Easter seasonal blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Hymn 182.